recap time. Um, so we lost the DM side audio for this episode. So I'm going to be taking it at about 2,000%, and we're just going to hammer through this. This is just after the party finished the uh, the puzzle fight with the elementals and are going through the exact same game, but they took to get into the room to get back out of the room. Um, they both exit in pairs. They find the chest out there. Uh, <clears throat> they do some prodding and touching. They discover that it hurts them when all when they touch it, so they get someone that was on either side of it to reach in at the same time, so that one of them's doing cold, one of them's doing hot, bam, get the chest out. Uh, loot it. They got some loose magic equipment, I can't remember for the life of me what it was, but among the things they got in there was a small statuette of Ifrit. Um, they grabbed that loot, they tried to get the door open, they tested it, they tried to lockpick it, they tried to disable device in it until someone tried to just open it, and then they just opened it and walked through, because that's just what parties do. <clears throat> um, when they got into the top of the next room, which we're arriving in just a moment, um, they could see down into the lower level. Uh, there was also a bit of interrogation in this part about what they all heard when Koke was alone with Echo in the uh, ice side. Um, and whether or not, uh, whether or not that was her becoming Leviathan, or what that was, or, you know, general party suspicion, general paranoia. Um, god, it took them a while to figure this damn door out. Um, if you're hearing that blipping, that's not me. Oh, no, wait, you probably won't be hearing that blipping. It's fine, it's fine. Um, god, still fucking banging on that door. Um... But yeah, there was there was a lot of hewing and hawing and figuring out what to do next and what's useful in the chest and what to use and what. Until finally, they got into the next room. There they go. Um, and I likely did a terrible job adjusting the camera here, but they could see running around in the lower level um, a team of people that they pretty quickly identified to be uh, Dysis and her archaeology team um, that they were aware were already in the Shadowguard Temple uh, snooping around and doing their archaeology stuff. Um, party kind of sprang into action there, and you saw a few different kind of approaches. Uh, a few of them immediately started to try to bash in the glass, uh, with the thought being, hey, we can just smash this in and, and jump down to the lower level like that. Uh, a few of the other ones were like, well, screw this, a couple hits in the glass, and it appears to be, like, as hard as fucking rock. They ran past it and jumped out the room at the back. Uh, in an attempt to kind of complete the the temple in a more uh, in a more linear way, uh, following the the general course, hoping to find like a, a staircase down or something, which they found a chute, a puzzle chute. Um, that there was some inverted climbing and some wind and shit, but Eleanor and Echo did eventually make their way down into the lower level with the ongoing fight between Dice's her party and some skeletons. Um, not too long afterwards, the party did eventually manage to bash in the uh, glass surface, thanks to the power of some royal arms and some uh, some DR penetration stuff on those, especially with the Shadowguard stuff. And they quick slow fall, and bam, they were all down into the room. Um, the combat after that point only lasted like a round or two. Um, they pretty deftly sweeped up the last couple skeletons. Um, and before they could even assail Dices about um, about what she was doing in there and all that kind of shit, she already started questioning the door, calling it an asshole, like, oh, why would you do this? And the door was like, you tried to pull my knob off, you know, like, and it's clear, it's like, oh, okay, she's dealing with the sentient puzzle door and she got frustrated and presumably attacked it or something. Um, and for the life of her, she couldn't figure out what the riddle was. But also, they notice on the north side of the chamber, there's a large golem uh, guarding a a room that there's some kind of puzzle involved. And every time they ask it anything, it responds. It responded with, "Do uh, you you do not have permission?" or uh, or things to that effect. Uh, the bottom part of the room, uh, fountain, three paintings on the wall, um, three different expressions on the paintings, and and a sealed door. Um, didn't figure that one out either, because they were kind of in the mood to just push through the dungeon pretty hard. Uh, surveying the door, they found a 
uh, an inscription above it that said the password is like banana. I can't remember what it was. Password is something. Um, and eventually, Koke, pretty quickly, really, Koke, um, pieced together that she had to get the door to say it. And that it wasn't you saying it, it's the thing saying it. And bam, through that door. No problem. Um,. At this point, uh, I think the angel they were there with was injured. Um, Arlene was there. Uh, Nell's sister, and introductions were made to that effect. Um, also, Balgareth. Uh, this is the first appearance of Balgareth, a uh, uh, player who plays Eleanor's other character that uh, he made for the sake of, of breaking things up a little bit, who now in the current campaign is kind of... Uh, been the main character for a bit, and now Eleanor's coming back, and it's a whole turbulent thing. There's Echo running up north trying to figure the puzzle. It came very close. Came extremely close to, to cracking it on, on a couple of occasions, but but didn't quite. Um, but yeah, the at that point, the uh, party pretty impatiently pressed forward, I believe. And we're going to get the break here in a couple of seconds. Um, and then we'll do the other half, just straight through. Uh, so I'll see you guys in just a moment here. And into the second half. Um, party, now grouped up with Dices. Uh, that aura is one of Nell's auras, I think an intelligence aura. Um, resolve to ignore the fucking puzzles and move on to the next room. Lining this room, they see uh, statuettes of um, of people and of different races and different equipments and different like stylings and everything, and pretty quickly conclude that these four, uh, these eight individuals represent the primals they've been dealing with um, on the surface of Aria. Um, noting that the ones that were uh, Noting that the ones that were, um, they, 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 the ones that they knew were destroyed had crumbled or were in the process of crumbling to dust. Um, quick bit of problem solving from Koke. She dives into the cauldron in the middle, which demands, like, the sacrifice of, of, the power of, of some, of some essence, presumably requiring a summoner, uh, or the blood of a summoner or the blood of a summoner's Eidolon to activate. Okay, climbs in the middle, turns into Leviathan, and gets sliced by one of the things. Um, and bam, like nothing, the door's open and they're through. Party balls up again. They go through the next uh, access point, and I believe into the vertical shaft stone room. Um, I'm not sure if we got maps for this one. But it was a large kind of circular area. Um, and they kind of walked out into it. They looked for... Enchantments, they look for a way down. Eventually, um, most of them stayed outside of the room, but uh, Balgareth kind of walked forward and gave the ground a good whack and just started falling because the ground just shattered out from under him, and it, it was clear the entire room was kind of a uh, surprise freefall. <clears throat> um, those with magic that were caught up in that handled it, no issue. Uh, feather falls. Uh, dimension doors, teleports, and all all sorts of stuff. Um, those with rope used rope. Belgrith was in the middle of the freefall though, and took a lot of work trying to to right himself. Um, ended up taking, I think, Koke grabbing him, and there was some ropes involved, and there was some Indiana Jonesing of hooking things, and he almost broke his fucking back doing it. Um, but survived you know, pretty confidently. Um, uh, land, ended up landing back down on the lower level. Uh, then there was a pretty lengthy struggle trying to get the other party members down, namely Echo, who I believe Trick had gone AFK at this point. Um, but they had, to, they had to string multiple ropes to support Echo's weight, and like it was a whole process. Uh, Dangling, dangling her down onto the lower level. Um, eventually, they got to the uh, the next chamber there, which was once they had all kind of grouped up at the bottom. Um, 
they entered into the room um and as they all walked into the next chamber most of the group that was with them vanished uh, dices vanished and a lot of the other party members vanished and it was just left with them um they got to a point where the ones that they kind of all glanced around and they it was clear they'd been separated into two groups um the ones on the top level looked around it's like oh there's a big abyss of uh of light or some shit below us and um there's appears to be no way across this gap and our levitation magic isn't working and all that kind of shit people on the other side uh it's like oh there's a big dark abyss above us there's a light abyss above us and it's like oh god piece it together lean over the edge they're both in opposite gravity on opposite planes of the same surface um they kind of step out and there's this sort of uh, jello substance uh, joining the other side of the chasm that they need to cross. Touching it for a moment, uh, they'd kind of give and then eventually they figured out, oh, we have to walk in each other's feet. Walk with each other. The people who are on the good side and the people who are on the evil side of the spectrum in order to cross the chasm. The whole like, balance thing. Um, almost fell in a couple of times before they came to this. Um, the sort of penultimate chamber of the temple where there was a judge waiting for them uh full judge armor big great sword and two of the uh of the fft20 kind of mech things and i decided them. they recognized the architecture was ancient and very advanced um and that this this man or this golem or whatever the fuck this thing was was sentient and aware of them and old and patient and you know very wise and asked them hey you know you you here you here to make a replacement and koke was like hell yeah i'm here to make a replacement whatever the fuck that means and he let them in and they all walked in past him um into the into what a sort of shrine chamber um in this chamber uh, koke kind of took a look at the shrine and, and looked through a bunch of statues of the different uh, primals and concluded through some spellcraft checks and some knowledge arcana um that whatever this thing was designed to do this sort of shrine chamber it would kill the person operating it by design um presumably takes their soul to do something something whatever the fuck it was to to some end um they kind of started piecing together this was maybe how primals were healed or something along those lines um before eventually abandoning that chamber and going down into another lower level um on this much lower level they found this sort of great abyss um long 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 switchback uh corridor down before they came and off to their left it curved out and away from them into the dark and off to the right curved out and away from them into the dark and it seemed to just go on forever um they concluded that they probably weren't in another dimension or anything, but that this was actually still Aria, and that they were probably underground, and this was just a, you know, continent-sized hollow chamber yeah, in the Earth, um, built by something. There's some sort of columns. They identified the uh, sort of columns, pins on the side of the chamber, um, holding up the structure, to be the obelisks up on Moonbright Island. Um, and sort of in, in a confused but resolved state, they threw some rocks in it, they poked, they pushed some buttons, they went back upstairs and they made camp to get ready to fight the judge the next day. And that's when we get audio back, because that's the next session, because we have to take a break because it's the middle of the goddamn night. So, see you guys then. <laughs>